Hi everybody, welcome back to our fourth watercolor painting class. Um, I'm so excited to be here with you. If you remember last week, we painted these rainbow raindrops. Boop, 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 boop. I went ahead and took a few moments to cut them out and you probably could tell on that one that I punched a hole in the top. So there are a few things we can do with these. We can punch holes in them and attach them by tying string onto a stick or really anything you have at home, a chopstick even if you wanted it short. But if you got a stick from outside and tied string, then you would have varying raindrops whoop, like that and have them in different heights. So that's one option. The other option is if you use a dark piece of paper, it can look really cool to glue your watercolor raindrops on a different piece of artwork. You could glue them onto a blank piece of paper or to something that you've painted that you wanna add raindrops to. So that's another trick is if you, let's say you make something with watercolor and you cut out shapes, then you can attach them to other artwork. So for today, I'm gonna to finish up hole punching all of these. And then I think I'll wait until I can go outside and find the perfect stick to make a mobile. But next week, I'll attach them to a stick so we can see the finished product. But today we are going to draw and paint a face. So I'll go over proportions um, and how to draw features. Uh, we're gonna expand what we learned about drawing eyes from a few classes ago. And then we're also gonna add flowers to the hair if you would like. So we're gonna take some of what we learned in class one um, when we drew our flower and leaf wreath. That's hard to say, leaf wreath. <laughs> And we're going to add that to our artwork today. And then we'll finish it off next week for our final class. All right, let's get started. First, I want to show the various options you have with your raindrops. You can do all kinds of cool things. You can even keep them like this and just play with them as almost like puzzle pieces. How cool. Okay, I just wanted to show that and you can make a bunch of small ones to gather around. All right, moving on to our face. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is look at a blank piece of paper and decide about how big you want the face to be and that make sure you leave enough room for the hair. So I know I want my face to be about that big. And I typically start with the eyes. So just like we did in our large eye drawing, I start with kind of an, a round top, almost an almond shape. And then I don't connect the lines on the bottom and you'll see why when we get to the eyelashes. And then I want to make a little dot to see about how far apart I want the eyes to be. The cool thing about drawing faces is if you tweak any of the features, it will look like a totally different person. The eyes can be closer together, further apart. The nose can be large, small, round, whatever. Everyone has different features and that's what's so fun about it. I can already tell that I've made this eye quite a lot, quite a bit larger than the other eye. So I'm gonna try that again. There we go, that's a little closer. The other cool thing about people is our faces are not perfectly symmetrical. So if one eye is a little bit bigger, one eye is a little bit smaller, it's totally fine. Okay. So then we're gonna draw the crease of the eye, starting at the outside. I'm drawing the crease. Then I'm gonna draw the pupil. Now, pupil, or not pupil, iris. The iris and the pupil are very important for the expression of the face. If you draw a circle in the center of the eye, the face will look really surprised and wide-eyed. What I've done is I've almost drawn a full circle, but I've stopped. You can see that the lid is covering part of the iris, and that gives more of a relaxed look. Then I'm gonna draw another circle on the inside. 
And if you guys remember when we drew our large eye, I do another circle inside of that. And I'm just going to color that second circle in, leaving the third circle white. So you can see that it's starting to come together. Now when we're doing the eyebrow, an eyebrow is going to be exactly starting from here. Now you don't have to draw these dotted lines, I'm just going to use them as guides. Okay. Here's an eyebrow shape. And then I like to do upward motions to create individual brow hairs as I go down the arch of the eyebrow, okay? And I'm here drawing hair, so I might as well draw on a few of the eyelashes. And I just do little curves. Now, again, remember when we drew our eye, we learned that to make an eye look rounded in the center, to wrap around an actual eyeball, the lashes will look off to the side like this, like that, and then coming more straight up in the center. Okay. So if we continue that dotted line down, that is actually what the sides of our nostrils, the width of the sides of our nostrils will be. Will be. So why don't we draw our little nostrils like that? Okay, there are our nostrils. And we're gonna draw the bottom of our nose too. There we go. So then from the bottom of our nose, I'm going to draw the opening of a nostril by making a little loop like that. Okay, and I'm gonna draw a little line like that to show the bridge of the nose. Oops, we forgot our bottom lashes. Remember, bottom lashes are a lot shorter than top lashes usually, but I encourage you to play around with it. If you wanna get really creative and do really long lashes or draw little flowers on the ends of the lashes, it's your art and you can do whatever you want. There we go. This person has this little button nose, so I'm gonna draw a little line there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase our dotted lines because we don't need them anymore. Some people love to use a ruler in order to map out um, the proportions. Okay, so another proportion trick is the center of the pupil. If you were to draw, and feel free to use a book or a ruler like this. I'm going to do it really lightly because I'm going to erase it. Okay. So if we do that, this is typically the width of our mouth, so the sides of our mouth. That almost looks a little wide. I think I did that great. <laughs> they might be crooked. That's okay. So I'm going to draw, this is the Cupid's bow. Okay, so I'm just hinting at the top lip. And the reason I like to leave it kind of open is because when I add color, I don't want it to be like a harsh line. Like that. Okay, and then I also like to do a little dot right there because it kind of looks a little more three-dimensional. I'm going to try that bottom lip again. Okay, something like that. All right, so that's the basic features of our face. Now, I'm going to draw the outside of the face. That can be really tricky. It's hard to get it even on both sides. Um, and it's hard not to make it too small, or maybe it doesn't even look like they have a chin, or make it too big, where it looks like they have a tiny face and a big head. So we're gonna draw really lightly so we can rework the shape if we need to. I usually go from the brow bone inward toward the eye and that creates the brow bone. 
And then everybody has cheekbones. So I make it kind of round right there. Some people like to do it each side. So you can see how it's gonna kind of come together. I'm still not happy with this bottom lip, you guys. That's the thing about drawing a face or drawing anything is don't be afraid to look at it, take a step back, redraw. So I know she's gonna need a chin, so I'm gonna make that a mark for her chin. And then I'm gonna connect the chin to the cheekbone. Connecting to the cheekbone, okay? Now you can see the proportions of her face. Her lips are very full. Her nose is small, her eyes are pretty average. So you can really play with proportions. You can make someone with thin lips, full lips, um, like I said, the size and shape is totally up to you. You can look at your own face or your family member's face and try to draw their proportions. That's kind of fun. And then I'm going to draw her neck. Also, I'm drawing a woman. You can draw a man, whatever you'd like, or a boy or a girl. Okay, and next, what do I want to do now? Now I think we should start adding the flowers to the hair. So some of the flowers that we drew on our wreath, let's see if I can grab that. There we go. This is a really good way to reference some of the flowers. You can even go ahead and prop it up so you can look at it. I'm going to draw, I think I'm gonna draw some flowers like this and like this. So, Remember how petals can be really wobbly and that's totally fine because nature is wobbly. Okay. And a leaf. And another leaf. If you notice, I'm just kind of filling it in, however. Okay, and I'm going to leave this one nice and open right there. So I can draw the back of a flower. And in the middle of this one, I'm going to put a little round circle. So I think for this, oh, and I'll do an upside down flower too. I think for this, mostly I'm going to do a lot of flowers, but I think I am going to draw some hair, maybe her bangs. There we go. And, hmm. Oh, let's draw one of our roses or peonies, whatever we, whatever we think these are. A big, roughly petally flower. And also remember that when you're drawing with pencil, it's a great way to experiment because nothing is set. You can choose to do a different shape once you get to the actual color. Okay, and I always like to add more leaves because they just fill it in, okay? I'm gonna take just a wavy hair line, and then like this. Okay, I think for now, I'm gonna stop there because I wanna have time to get to our color and we can fill in as we go. Okay, so as always, we are using a medium brush and a small brush. I think I've said this before, this is my workhorse. I love this brush because it's rounded at the top, um, but some people prefer to use square. You just wanna make sure that you have something that's large enough for you to move color around. So for this particular piece, I'm going to put a lot of color into the flowers, a little color on the lips and cheeks and eyes, but I'm gonna leave the skin tone totally blank um, you don't have to do that. You can fill it in however you want. Okay, 
So let's start with some color. How about orange? Ooh, it's kind of reddish orange. And I'm just getting the base color down. And also remember, once this is totally dry, you you can add layers as well. I'm going to do orange on that one as well. And now I'm moving to yellow. And I'm just going to fill it in. I could tell that my brush was a little bit dirty, or maybe my <laughs> water cup was dirty because that yellow looks dark, but I kind of like it. And how about some purple? Purple right here. And while I have purple, I'm gonna just, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and move to my smaller brush so I can have a little more control. And I'm going to do some little tiny flowers and they don't need to be lined. They're just little purple splashes of color. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of green and I'm gonna do a dot at the end and that will bleed into the purple. But I think it's gonna be a cool effect because it'll look, it'll sort of mesh together and I think that will be really pretty. Okay, back to my bigger brush. So I'm rinsing between colors and drying it dabbing off the color on my paper towel. And what color do we want this one to be? I kind of want it to be yellow as well. So I'm gonna do the front of the flower yellow, and I'm gonna wait to paint that back portion because I don't want it to bleed into the front. I want to use some pink. So I'm using a pretty watered down pink. And I'm gonna fill in with a lot of water and then you can take a little bit more color and kind of dab it in the center. And that's gonna create some depth. Ooh, that's a bright, bright pink, isn't it? Wow. I don't know if your sets will have that bright of a pink I was using a squeezy one called Opera Rose and it is so bright, I love it. So, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna take a watered down pink as well and I'm gonna do little circles of blush. Now, most people do not wear blush like this but I think it looks really cute in a painting. And if you notice that it's just a little bit too much, like I think that's a bit bright, I'm gonna dab it in the center. And it has a really cool effect, just a light circle of pink. There we go. All right, on to green leaves. Okay, so I'm being careful not to get my green on the color that's not quite dry. Oh, I missed one of those flowers. I didn't see her there. All right. I'm gonna do a wash of that green. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of blue. I still have some blue there. Okay, then I'm gonna take a little bit of blue because blue and green go really well together and it makes sort of like a turquoise. So I'm gonna add that to my leaves. Like that. Now, I'm just gonna draw some little a line like that and then you just draw little or paint little leaves coming off of it and that'll dry like that and it'll look really pretty. And you can really take your time to fill in 
a ton of different flowers and leaves and just keep adding and building or you can choose to just do like one or two again totally your choice okay i'm going to move on to our small brush because we have some small detail work to do there so i'm going to do the leaves too much on that one so I'm actually gonna dab it. Remember that trick? If it gets a little too wet you can just dab it and do it again. I just had a bit too much water on my brush. There we go. Okay and I think this is dry enough ish to paint that back back part of the flower and that back part of the flower I'm going to make orange. And it ends up looking like this dark shadowy portion of the flower. Like that. And for now, I'm gonna leave that little orb inside just how it is. Then I'm going to make this one orange. And the cool thing about watercolor is it dries really quickly, so this is already dry. I'm gonna add some orange to the base of that. And I'm gonna add some orange to the base of that. Great. All right, now while these are drying, I'm gonna move on to the face. Let's make her eyes, hmm, let's make her eyes, I'm gonna make her eyes brown. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow because sometimes people have a little bit of goldish yellow in their eyes. If you look closely to your eyes, they have probably several colors, maybe blue and green or grayish blue or brown and gold. And it doesn't really matter if we cover up the dark black pupil because it is going to be black anyway. And I'm going to paint her eyebrows kind of brown as well. I'm just doing a watered down version. There we go. Okay, moving on to our larger brush. I'm actually going to take a really watered down green and I'm going to fill in some of her hair. Kind of she'll look like she's part of the plant. All these plants in her hair. And remember to get enough water. When you have enough water, it really makes things blend and bleed and it ends up drying really nice. Great. Now that I'm looking at it, maybe she should have a little color. I'm going to take a little bit of brown. And I'm going to paint like her shadows. Okay. Starting at the top. So what I'm doing is I'm painting just the shadows and that creates sort of dement that dimension. So it looks like her nose is still popping forward. and around her eyes too. I'm gonna wash over this cheek so it looks like a shadow. Great. There we go. Mixing a little tiny bit of orange and red or orange and pink into the brown makes it look more like skin too. But I'm trying to use more of the color that you guys might have in your palette, so it may not look like real skin tone of anyone, but it's a little pinky. Here we go. We'll stop there. I'm going to add a little more orange to her lips. Great. Okay, so now we're going to just fill in this little one with pink. There we go. 
All right, great. So that's a great stopping point. You can keep adding little flowers right here. We're gonna wait for this to totally dry and then we're gonna line it like we did our wreath. All right, well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for coming and painting with me. I'm really excited for next week's class where we finish this. We'll add a few more layers and then we'll line it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are creating fun things. See you next week, bye.